Thank you for clicking It's Starting Now. Based on player feedback and with the launch of Vessel of Hatred on October 8th, we're making big changes to existing systems in the game. We want the player's journey to feel meaningful and for players to understand exactly where they are in the game in terms of power. I have help today from Adam Fletcher, who's the Associate Director of Community for Diablo, and Aislinn Hall, who's a systems designer here on the team. Welcome. Aislinn will be answering some questions we picked out from social media, so thank you, community, for submitting these questions. Let's jump right into it. World tiers are gone. So now while leveling up your character, you'll have four difficulty choices to choose from. Normal, Hard, Expert, and Penitent. As you go up in difficulty, you'll gain more experience points and gold find. So now you can customize your leveling journey how you want. Maybe you find a kick-ass item and want to push your character a little bit harder? Well, now you can. Also, from levels 1 to 15 on any difficulty, we've replaced the material drops you would have received with items, like armor and weapons. In addition, the Butcher and Treasure Goblins will drop a guaranteed Legendary at any level. So chase away, or run away if it's an early game Butcher. Existing characters are being set to level 50, but the new max character level is 60. With this, players are gaining 10 more skill points, opening up even more build possibilities. And you're able to put points into ultimate abilities now, giving them an even greater impact. We'll talk about Paragon later on in this video, but also at level 60, the pit opens up, and pit progression is how you're going to unlock the end game difficulties. We're calling them Torments 1, 2, 3, and 4. To unlock Torment 1 difficulty, you'll need to clear a pit level of 20, either solo or in a group. For Torment 2, it's pit tier 35. For 3, it's pit tier 50. And for Torment 4, it's level 65. The pit itself has been rebalanced. For example, this version of tier 65 is more challenging than before, but its rewards are punchier. Also, we have what we think is a nice quality of life change. So the pit puts a lot of emphasis on getting to the end and completing it before the timer runs out. So we're moving glyph leveling from Nightmare Dungeons to the pit. We felt that these play styles are more in line with each other, and in Nightmare Dungeons, players sometimes feel punished for exploring around, so we're moving master working materials from the pit to Nightmare Dungeons. So now you won't feel bad for taking a wrong turn or exploring a bit, since you'll be gaining master working materials either way. Previously, when you were going through the pit, you'd get all your master working materials at the end. But now, in Nightmare Dungeons, you're going to be able to go and, like Ruben said, kill all these monsters, explore all these little nooks and crannies, and you're going to get masterworking materials from all those different places, which really fits with the Nightmare Dungeon playstyle. Before I get into the glyph leveling, I wanted to mention that Ancestral and Mythic Uniques start dropping in Torment 1. They will always have at least one greater affix and always drop at the maximum item level, which is now 800. Non-Ancestral items cap out at 750. So on Glyph XP, we're removing it. Now you upgrade your Glyphs with Attempts. Here's how you gain Attempts and level up your Glyphs. You gain three Attempts from successfully completing a Pit level, and you gain one bonus Attempt when you don't die during the run. So four possible chances. To help you catch lower level Glyphs up, every 20 level difference between the completed Pit tier and Glyph rank grants a bonus upgrade per Attempt. We'll put a link to our blog in the description down below if anyone is interested in more detail, but that's essentially how the upgrade system works. On the topic of glyphs, the levels are being increased from 21 to 100. At level 45, a rare glyph can be upgraded to a legendary glyph, which increases the radius from 4 to 5 and gives the glyph one additional affix. Okay, time for paragon boards. Each class is getting one completely new Paragon board. These boards each have a new Legendary node to help support more builds and playstyles. With Legendary Glyphs and new powers coming in, we've decided to reduce the amount of Paragon boards you can use to five, including the Starter Board, which helps to make your choices more important and helps your build come online faster, since you won't have to link so many things together for it to function. Paragon levels are also being increased from 200 to 300, but Players will all get the build-defining parts of Paragon at around 200. So from there, it's about getting rare and magic nodes, which are much more incremental in power. So you don't have to feel bad if you're not hitting Paragon 300. Basically, players can get what they absolutely need first for their build, then grab other nodes they might find useful. With so many Paragon levels to earn, they now apply realm-wide, so this level is now shared across characters within respective standard and hardcore partitions once your character hits max level. For example, a new season starts up and you make a seasonal character. After reaching level 60, you will start earning Paragon levels. 
Let's say you eventually make it to Paragon level 200. Now when you make an additional seasonal character within the season, you'll be able to tap into your current seasonal Paragon level of 200 once that character hits max level. Seasonal Realm Paragon resets every season. However, all the earned Paragon XP will be added to your current Eternal Realm Paragon when the season ends. That was great, Adam. Thank you for the rundown. One extra thing I want to chime in with is that those additional 100 Paragon points are intended to be icing on the cake for your build. The first 200 points are intended for your character to become well-defined, and then the extra 100 is just a bit of extra fun you can have in the world of Sanctuary. Aislin, let's pick your brain a little bit more. We have some community questions from that social post I mentioned earlier, so let's get into it. Kang Zhang asks, what are our plans for visual clarity during dungeons or any activity, really? So we know we get a lot of feedback on red on red and health hides. And so something that you might notice in the health hides is that we've adjusted the lighting. This is something that we want to improve on in all activities in the game. So you'll see more improvements in the future. Dallas says, what's the plan for masterworking materials in Stygian stones come season six? Should players use or convert these before then? Players won't need to worry about converting these before Season 6. In Season 6, we're going to have systems in place that allow you to convert your masterworking materials into the new masterworking material that you'll need to upgrade your gear. Additionally, in Season 6, Stygian Stones won't be needed to summon tormented bosses anymore, but because of that, we're going to be increasing the sell price of them so that you can get a hefty amount of moolah. 8-Bit Bandit asks, how will torment bosses be affected with the new world difficulty update? In Season 6, Tormented Bosses are going to be available on all four Torment tiers. That means that they're going to drop really good loot starting in Torment 1, and then drop even more of that in Torment 4. It also means that no matter how powerful your build is, you're going to have a hard version of that boss to fight. Flower asks, since Torment difficulty tiers drastically change resistance penalties, and with the introduction of Grand Gems, will there be any changes or scaling to gem fragment drops as difficulty increases? There absolutely will. So in higher Torment tiers, you are going to be earning more gem fragments, which is going to allow you to reach the new grand tier a lot faster. So buff up your build so that you can get to the higher gem tiers as quick as you can. James Cossens asks, when the expansion comes out on October 8th, uh, will I be able to create a Spiritborn, go through the whole main quest line with Lilith, and then progress through Vessel of Hatred? Absolutely. So we want you to be able to experience any element of the game's story on any character, and the Spiritborn is no exception. If you'd like to start a new Spiritborn, play through the original campaign, and then go through Vessel of Hatred, you're totally within your rights to do that. Thanks again, Aislinn, for answering all these wonderful questions. That's going to be all for us today. We really appreciate you watching, and we're excited for the launch of Vessel of Hatred. There will be additional links to our blogs in the description below. We'll see everyone in Nahantu.